The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour. I am your humble, yet squeezably soft host, David White. Once again, we're going into the breach, dear friends. And uh, as always, uh, eh, we come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And it does uh, as we start off the day um, or not the day, but at least uh, uh, to the two o'clock hour 2092 on the S&P cash up 16 points, uh, 2.4 billion shares, 2.46 billion shares. So we'll see how that tracks throughout the show and the uh, program. But uh, we will continue. Um, what else do we have going on out here? Well, I uh, have a lot of people that were short. We started talking about that last week. Uh, volume has continued to be light and variable. Uh, that it continues to be an issue. And uh, a lot of people wanting to get out of being short. We've got cash moving on and in from Europe uh, as they try to get out before the uh, British UK exit vote. That's the 15th. And then, of course, we go right into the FOMC meeting and uh, so we got a bunch of stuff right before that expiration day and uh, nothing else really else going to change uh, that anytime soon anyway uh got a lot of stuff going on we'll get to it yet today uh kind of wondering if this isn't about as good as it gets maybe we've got a few more points higher before friday but looks to me like uh pretty much a lot of these stocks are out of juice uh, we will check back in it. There's a handful of stocks that are starting to give signals. We'll look at see how those have done since uh, uh, this morning when I put them in the newsletter. Uh, we'll start getting a read on how this market's working. Uh, but in the meantime, we got to get this party started. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1931, the New York Stock Exchange begins regularly uh, reporting short sales something that they'd never done before no one really knew how short uh, uh sales had gone uh but uh, this was of course uh in a huge uh, response to the crash of 1929 um, there were stocks that were some of them were 200 percent short and since no one was really doing much with uh, uh working out the uh both uh, sides of the trade it was not uncommon to see stocks absolutely whittled to nothing because uh, it's uh, when you got uh, twice as much of something for sale that you only have one of, um, supply and demand that does rule. Uh, it was, the, of course, the, uh, the stock manipulator, the bear raids uh, that got a lot of traction in 1929. And within, of course, six months, Congress had passed laws forcing them to track short sales. Now we have, uh, we're living in a virtual paradise of knowing uh, that, but uh, even when we get short reports, those things uh, are at least two weeks old, if not three. Uh, it was a uh, act of Congress that actually got it from one month to every two weeks, but even those two weeks um, are, you know, in the stock market, that's a it's like a dog's life, isn't it? Seven years for every one a human. Uh, I'm going to say it's dog years for that. As of today, the exchange reports uh, 5.6 million shares have been sold short, or about 12% of the exchange's total monthly trading volume, and that was in 1931. Of course, that's from the crash and its aftermath, a history of security markets in the United States from 1929 to 1933. There is a very few things, but uh, we've moved forward a bit, at least in reporting. 
And of course, a great deal of the work I do has to do with that. Other things going on, Microsoft is cutting another 1,850 jobs connected to its mobile phone business. This is that uh, stinker of a stock that Bomber was re responsible for and buying Nokia. Uh, the uh, On the heels of those 4,500 jobs that they cut um, just a week ago, uh, 1,850 more. Now, you would think, well, they're getting out of the phone business, and that is not the truth. Uh, what they have done, I've written about in the Tech Insider, is uh, decide to give somebody that's had a winning hand in product design uh, the ability to build a phone. Uh, the best-selling products Microsoft has other uh, in hardware, of course, are its uh, uh, Surface tablet and Surface laptop. Both of those are about the highest rated products that you can find uh, in geekdom, uh, the reviews tend to be eh, maybe one or two flaws, uh, but uh, that's kind of making a tablet into a laptop uh, is connected to one of those, so you have problems anyway. Uh, of course, then they made the most uh, trick laptop in existence. Uh, my nephew actually bought one. Uh, I played with it for a while. I just can't see uh, spending that kind of money. If I was going to spend another 2,500 bucks, it would be on new video cards at about 750 bucks a piece. Uh, but, uh, and maybe a newer, faster processor, but eh, not a lot of stuff I need. I've already got a ton of screens sitting and be for me, but, uh, what they're doing, and I guess the, uh, the guy's name is Panos, but, uh, he's won all kinds of awards. He's kind of the design genius uh, that uh, lives in the background. It's not like Apple where they flog, or let me put it this way, the Apple uh, designer flogs his name everywhere. Um, I remember, what was it, six months ago or nine months ago, he was all mad because they wouldn't buy him a jet of his own, the Apple one, not this guy. Uh, but uh, some people get a little full of themselves. This guy's a little younger, a little brasher, uh, but uh, a little bit more uh, uh, shielded from the uh, tech world and journalist does not uh, try to uh, push his name as much as he does his products. And I think maybe a little humility has done a great deal for Microsoft over Apple lately. But um, his whole deal has been to build a phone that rivals and surpasses uh, the Samsung product and, of course, uh, the uh, Apple iOS product. Uh, and the question is whether they can do it. But the one nice thing that this guy actually put in together was a thing called Continuum. And that is that whatever you have on your phone, you can just swipe it and it will go to the tablet. You can take your tablet and then swipe it and go to your uh, desktop. Uh, you can take your desktop and then swipe it and run it to the 105-inch version of uh, Microsoft Windows running on that 105-inch big screen. So you can literally have one interface that is consistent across all of them. That's called a continuum. Anyway, uh, the idea is that he is building this phone somewhere in a secret, uh, secret bunker. But uh, they're axing everybody that had anything to do with Nokia. Uh, probably a smart thing. Um, they didn't ever get it right. We'll be back after this short commercial timeout. Give me a call, 877-927-664. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave take your phone calls now, now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 had a good question in the den during the break and that is uh when did the uptick rule go into effect that was 1938 uh, and uh, that went on till about 2007. That was overtaken by Reg SHO. And uh, thank God, because a lot of that Reg SHO is making me big money these days by uh, getting a little bit better view into shorting. Uh, we've discussed it a few times on the show, even had a webinar on uh, how you can get that information. But uh, uh, reporting much better. And occasionally I'll show you a chart that has uh, the daily short volume in it. That's part of that Reg SHO uh, in uh, 2007. It went into effect in 2009. Uh, so we've been under that regime. But uh, if you need a link to it, uh, just email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, as always, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. You can uh, post a message in the den. You can also. Uh, Give me a call, 877-927-6648. As always, uh, anyway, Microsoft, uh, very interesting stuff going on there, but uh, cutting the dead wood and maybe moving on to a much tricker phone, but uh, not trying to go after the low end of the market anymore uh, and are going to make uh, what they think is the Surface phone. Uh, at least uh, that is the discussion going on uh, that Microsoft has hired maybe 50 or 100 engineers from Apple and Google um, to uh, put together a operating system that really works well from a five inch screen all the way to a 105 inch screen. Um, we've talked about this many times. I bring it up eh, mostly in the summertime, but we bring it up from time to time. And that is the data dump. Uh, this is uh, normally one of the biggest data dumps coming up. Uh, that is this three-day weekend. Uh, most uh, pros in the market uh, tend, like me, uh, know that it tends to be fairly, uh, mm, what can you say, 
quiet day on Friday. Uh, I will not be here. I'm going to extend my vacation to a Tuesday, so I will be back next Wednesday. But what happens? Uh, most of these uh, folks know that uh, people like me and, of course, uh, big men of Wall Street will be headed to the Hamptons. And uh, what do you do when you're at the Hamptons? Well, you don't read 10 Qs and 10 Ks and all the other 10 filings going on. So if you have to air your dirty laundry, uh, you're taking out the trash, or if you're just blatantly a crook, uh, you have to put stuff in there, especially now with some of the new regulations, uh, pretty much since 2010, uh, you better put everything in there. Or you're probably going to either get sued or fined. So uh, there's uh, two things. One, just people blatantly putting stuff in there that they know shouldn't be in there. Um, and uh, a lot of this has to do with compensation, other things that would be horribly, uh, uh, what can I say, horribly, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, just uh, disgraceful, a weasel-like, skunk, hyenas, uh, anything that uh, you can kind of uh, put up there in the way of uh, probably not doing the best uh, work for guarding your, uh, your shareholders' value. Um, and uh, the, there's a few things that go on in with this, but what will happen is that a lot of these filings will come out. Uh, the uh, SEC is actually open till 5.30 on Friday. So what do they do? They wait till about uh, 5 o'clock and they dump all these things in there and hope that no one goes and digs and looks through any of these. One of the most interesting things to me was that there are some people that make some incredible money sifting through these. I have, and on occasion, uh, gone through some of these. If I'm in a stock, I always read what happens on these big weekends uh, before I get to that Tuesday morning open. Uh, just to make sure that it wasn't something in there that we cannot see. A lot of times it takes till Wednesday till everybody catches back up. So if you uh, will uh, do some work on Monday night coming back in to Tuesday, normally you're ahead of everybody else. You can get your trades uh, set up uh, portionately. Uh, of course, this is all about individual stocks. But um, when uh, Jim Chanos was asked, uh, how he figured out Enron was a giant uh, fraud, uh, he had this to say. Most noticeably, when we picked up the documents for the first time, were an odd series of disclosures in the footnotes to the financial statements, which is usually where a lot of uh, the bad things are happening. They're buried in the footnotes. Companies will always put their best foot forward in their earnings statement. Um, but the details behind that earnings statement are what's interest to us. And in the uh, footnotes, the, the one glaring uh, uh, thing that, that just set off alarm bells here in our shop was a paragraph that described a set of companies that had been set up by Enron, uh, which were being run by a uh, senior executive of Enron, but with outside investors. And they were set up to do business with Enron, including trading and securities with Enron. So right away, I mean, a common sense approach to that would be, how could a senior officer of Enron run these partnerships and exercise a fiduciary responsibility to the partners while still being a senior executive of Enron. Anyway, um, if you uh, listen to uh, Jim Chano's talk for very long, he says that uh, nine out of ten times all this stuff is in the footnotes uh, because of regulation and lawyers. Uh, they all want to put it down there in that footnote section of all these uh, ten filings that come, and normally they'll bury these. Uh, but uh, there have been some fairly interesting uh, things buried in the 10K. Uh, but uh, you will see the we biggest weasels uh, in the market uh, doing all kinds of things that uh, they would be embarrassed to uh, have anybody know about. Uh, but uh, the lawyers will make them actually put it in these 10Ks. Uh, some of the most notable ones were uh, an executive in San Diego had a uh, stepdaughter that wanted to continue going to uh, high school in Denver. And they were flying her back and forth on the corporate jet every weekend. So it went and picked her up on Friday night and brought her back Sunday night. 
Uh, of course, uh, the plane had to go both ways, and it was about twenty grand every weekend, so her so she could continue going to school in high school in Denver. Um, you know, between that and other things that we've seen out there, that gives you a real indication of whether or not they are bothering to even think about shareholder value. Uh, but there are a ton of other examples. On the 10th of June, we're going to have the head of a company called Footnoted. She has a, a thing called footnoted.com. Um, she has a newsletter. You can go in and dig through it. But basically what she does is go through and dig through every single one of these. And she just puts out the uh, dirt on it. Uh, the red flags that she sees. Uh, if you are a subscriber and pay her a bunch of cash, uh, then she will just email them to you. So a great deal of the people that we think would have to be uh, sifting through these, they're not. They're just paying this company uh, footnoted to do it. She will be here, though, the uh, 10th of June. That's a Friday. And uh, we'll have her talk a great deal more about it. But, uh, she's got a regular newsletter and then a very expensive one. Uh, you might check out her site, footnoted.com. And uh, we'll be back. We'll talk about uh, some of the stuff that is out now. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, we're back. Anyway, uh, look for those uh, 10Qs and 10Ks uh, after the bell on Friday night as they normally come. 
Uh, probably the most interesting one over the last week was Yahoo. Uh, it included uh, a lot of charts and all kinds of stuff. Basically, a rebuttal, almost 50 pages, explaining why if uh, the uh, current CEO of Yahoo leaves, she will get $50 million. Uh, but uh, very interesting. But uh, a lot of stuff in those things that give you a hint as to where the problems and the bodies lie in a company. Uh, but uh, with the regulatory issues now, lawyers are, uh, although a bit wordy, uh, putting in all the bad news these days. Well worth checking those out if you're looking at more than a uh, quick trade on a company. Of course, uh, uh, as we've said here before, the U.S. tends to be a big innovator. Uh, the uh, Chinese tend to steal our intellectual property, and uh, the Europeans tend to sue people for cash, and that's how they make cash make their money. Uh, it's a raid yesterday uh, night. A uh, 100 French police raided Google's Paris headquarters on Tuesday, escalating an investigation into the digital giants on suspicion of tax evasion. Google said it was fully complying with French law. It's under pressure across Europe from public opinion and governments angry at the way multinationals exploit their presence around the world to minimize the tax they pay. And uh, my guess is that they're 100% within the law, but that does not really matter, uh, especially in France, uh, a uh, wholly socialist com uh, country, where, of course, uh, socialism means eventually you're going to run out of other people's money. But uh, mm. Google's sitting there with some fat pockets. We'll go after them. I don't think that there's a great deal to this, but it does not matter. Uh, at the end of the day, Google will have to pay money to stay in France and in Europe, and it is nothing more than the, a mob ploy for the most part. But uh, interesting nonetheless. Uh, Baba O'Reilly. Oh, really? Eh, how many people know that? Who's song? They don't know the name of it, but it's Baba O'Reilly. And most people think it's Teenage Wasteland. But uh, The Who. Yes, The Who. Anyway, Alibaba. As we've always said, uh, there's nothing like uh, Chinese companies. I like Chinese. I like I have railed. I have shaken my fist. I have uh, talked until I'm blue in the face about the accounting uh, and lack thereof for Chinese companies. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, what we now know is the Securities and Exchange Commission, after a year of telling Alibaba to actually cough up real documents, uh, they have basically waved a index, no, not an index finger, maybe a middle finger at the SEC, and uh, told them to excrete uh, some uh, human water up a rope. Uh, but uh, it looks like now that at least the Securities and Exchange Commission may actually even think about being a tiny bit serious in the uh, uh, previous uh, events uh, about accounting and a Chinese company, we've uh, chronicled uh, VIP shops, holdings, uh, VIPs, uh, and others that uh, no one, they actually filed two sets of documents and books, uh, one for the uh, uh, folks in, uh, in China and one for the U.S., and the SEC still hasn't done anything about it. Um, kind of interesting. But uh, the question is, will we actually get to uh, the point where uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, will have any kind of uh, power uh, to demand the actual paperwork and the real set of accounting um, in uh, China? As uh, I'm trying to remember the guy that said it. Maybe I'll think about it here in a minute. But uh, it was uh, even 100 years ago, something about uh, every published account for finance is either a, a little bit roasted or totally burnt uh, for uh, uh, actually uh, having real books. But uh, El Baba uh, down lower today, and uh, I don't think you can say anything other about it than that. But Baba O'Reilly? Oh, really? Eh, we'll have to see that. Anyway, that's it for the day. I uh, was to get into some charts. Uh, in this segment, again, you can email me at path at tfnn.com uh, and uh, 
Uh, and we've already got some email flowing in. And we'll take a look at this. I'm looking to exit uh, CLF, Cliff Naturals. I'm long at 298. Uh, let's see what else is going on out here. Um, hang on just a second. I want to take a look and see what was going on out here. Um, okay. Take a little closer look at this out here. Hey, you're up today. You're at 298. Um, uh, we got not a lot of volume. I don't think you have a lot here. Uh, unfortunately, with email, there's a, it's only a one-way deal. But um, if I would have made this trade, you probably would have thought that this was about everything that you would have get, gotten out of this stock. Uh, this uh, high-volume gap down on the 9th was going to be resistance, and the most you could have looked at uh, was this gap. Uh, the high of that day was uh, $3.35, and that would have been my target, uh, that you're 90% there. I would probably just take the cash right now and run. Um, you know, there's just not that much in Cliff Naturals uh, out here. Another question uh, about looking at Microsoft. Again, I have a feeling this is just... Uh, mostly a reaction to them culling a lot of the dead wood uh, for that Nokia deal. And you've had a couple of days where they've popped on that. They're just getting rid of expenses and actually focusing on stuff that makes the money. Uh, nothing Wall Street likes better than uh, a clean, well-run company and one that actually looks uh, a great deal more uh, like it's focused on something. And, uh, as my boss, uh, or older boss, uh, partner, used to once tell me, um, he says, uh, this is after, I think, about my third product. He goes, uh, one thing, when you bring a product to us, he says, uh, it's always a, a great rifle shot. He says, you know, it's, it's got a very targeted market. Uh, you've uh, Not a lot of people are focusing on this one bunch of customers. He says... Uh, I think this was commenting about the one that he didn't like. He said, this one's kind of more like a shotgun. He says, you're kind of like shooting everywhere on this thing. Um, bring it back to me if you can find a focused market. And uh, I think in any kind of endeavor, um, the more focused you are generally, the more money you make. Uh, look at Apple, which has basically focused itself down to an iPhone manufacturer. And uh, you can see that it, there's a great deal of money there. Uh, the downside is you have to make sure that you have another rifle ready to go. Not just one. <laughs> you, you need uh, multiple snipers. You can't just have one, and you can't just have a shotgun. Or in the case of that product, I think it, he thought it was a blunderbuss, if you know what that is. Give me a call. Uh, email me. Uh, scribble a note. Wrap it around a rock and throw it through the window. Do something. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And as we go back through this, uh, had a question in the den, so we'll go right to this. It says, um, the S&P has rallied uh, February to April. What do you uh, need to see to lead you to speculate this rally from May 19th low at uh, 2026, will extend to new highs over 2134. Uh, my guess is a couple of days of rallying when we come back next uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, if this market does not act like it did at the first of the year, uh, then uh, I think you've got some good uh, opportunities to go higher. I would say that we're probably just about as good as it gets uh, until Friday. Um, I thought maybe we even get a little bit of a pullback uh, before then. But uh, if you can't get people to start selling after uh, fund buying uh, on the third, I think you have a good choice for uh, maybe seeing that this goes a little higher. I am not optimistic in it. I think that there's a good chance that we saw the high today uh, or we'll see the high today, um, mostly because of the amount of uh, people uh, shorting has uh, pretty much uh, vaporized the last couple of days. We had one more short squeeze today in many stocks, but um, I had a bunch of uh, stocks that had tested previous highs yesterday on significantly lighter volume. I know that the market and the broad indexes a lot of times do not reflect that. I tend to look at the stocks in the index. Uh, they tend to be a little bit early, but there are enough of them. Uh, the one that I would wanted to look at uh, the, the most closely today uh, was CRM. It, it had tested its a previous high with ridiculously light volume. I wanted to see if there was anything left in the can on this one. I go back to the November 19th high, $92.90 on Salesforce. He had 11 million shares. So yesterday, as we break through that price, what do we get? 5.8 million shares today, 3.4 million shares. If we don't get a sign of strength in this one here in the next day or two, I'm just assuming that we've got uh, people piling in for fund buying at the top, and we're very, very close to some very uh, risky trading, let me put it that way. Uh, if you were long up to this point, uh, congratulations. Uh, you made a lot of dough. Uh, to me, it is incredibly risky. The reason why, there are no natural buyers. We're basically running all the shorts out, which uh, is exactly the same thing that happened the 28th, 29th, uh, 27th of December uh, going into the first of the year and why the market literally started to fall apart. Once you have any movement down and there are no natural buyers, i.e. shorts to cover, you can have some very swift moves 
uh, to the downside. And uh, that's where the markets are extremely risky in my book. Now, tonight, tomorrow night, and Friday, I will be watching very closely to see how many of these shares are being shorted. Uh, again, if you're watching on Tiger TV or in the den, uh, I create my own uh, data each night to look at. Unfortunately, it does lag a day. Uh, but even in CRM, you can see uh, some of what's going on out here. I call these matchstick volume uh, bars out here. And the reason why, let me zoom in a little bit more, is they kind of remind me of little matchsticks. I didn't have a, I, it's, I've kind of struggled for a great way to show how much each volume each day is accorded to being short and, uh, and short sales uh, opposed to regular ones. But uh, of course, you had a lot of people short this stock uh, on the 19th. Uh, and, uh, you know, it didn't go down enough, actually, to shake them out. What we have now is three days of almost no shorting compared to that 19th day. And this is where you get the two or three days, you get shorts to cover, and, you know, uh, you had a great deal probably of people sh cover when this thing gapped up three bucks. But the next couple of days, a lot of people thought, well, this thing's going to come back and fill this gap, so I'll short it. Well, it goes three days up. We go into a long weekend. The shorts blink, and that's it. But what happens is you've got all these days out here where the short percentage gets smaller and smaller and smaller, that means if this thing goes down, uh, it's going to move down much faster than it would have three or four days ago. So to me, this is where the uh, real kind of uh, risk comes in in the market. Not that you're going to lose a little bit more money if you're short that it goes higher. But if it does go lower, how fast can it go down to 78 bucks? And the answer is very quick if you don't have any natural buyers. If you only have dip buyers and nobody covering their shorts, uh, much tougher out here uh, to, uh, and much easier to get something big and moving going on. Uh, but uh, a combination of two things. One, uh, you had 13 million shares in that gap up. Uh, that uh, November 19th high had 11 million shares. So you can make a case that we at least got into that candle with some decent volume. What you do want to have, though, is the next three days, some people want longer, uh, is that ideal, which is volume coming in uh, after a sign of strength, which that gap up had to be, uh, and you're just not getting much. But that's not uh, the only stock doing that why I'm talking about being a little risk averse out here. Uh, many stocks out here with light volume. Um, Acadia Pharmaceuticals, this thing had a nice pullback back to the top. Uh, we're back to a gap, but also the April 25th high, $35.18, 3.7 million shares. Got into that uh, yesterday with uh, 2 million shares today, 2.3 million shares. But uh, my guess is we're going to be a little bit short on some of those. We haven't had a lot of stocks right at highs, and that's uh, telling me a great deal. Uh, same thing with Adobe Systems. You had a nice pop-up on this on earnings of 12 million shares. It's kind of stayed in that candle most of this time. But uh, today, uh, trying to run through it, but uh, 3 million shares compared to that 12 million share high back on March 18th. So another one I'm watching closely. Uh, other stocks trying to break out of uh, levels uh, and uh, whether you see the volume or not. Uh, we talked about Archer Daniel Midland yesterday coming up to that high. Today, a little bit more follow through. This is what you should see, but uh, not what I'm seeing mostly in tech stocks uh, and in the NASDAQ stocks. Most of those are breaking these highs with lighter volume. Uh, Archer Daniel Midland supermarket to the world. Uh, up in, what, 6.7 million shares already, certainly more than the May 3rd high of 5.9 million shares. So still moving along. Uh, Andy Heck's probably got to be handy and uh, thanks that uh, or likes that. Anthem Electronics uh, down on high volume. Wanted to see how this thing reacted today to news, and I think it tells you everything you need to know there. Uh, other stocks, BOK Financial. I've uh, been watching this one for a while. 
Um, this one really starting to tail off for volume at highs. The first March 18th high, 1.3 million shares. Broke it on March 27th with 410,000 shares. Uh, we're back up into that candle today with, um, what, 150,000 shares. Um, this is the kind of signals that we're starting to get. Normally, you get a handful of these and you get uh, maybe a, a bushel full and then all of them. And uh, that's why I'm kind of worried probably Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, uh, at least. But uh, we shall see. Your mileage may vary. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Uh, as I said, I was starting to see a great deal of these stocks earlier um, pre-market. Um, and uh, I think we probably got pretty close to getting some great long-term protection uh, in the daily newsletter this morning in options. So we'll sit on those and see what's happening. But at some point, you know, you just get some overshoots on some stuff. So we started to look into that. But uh, a lot uh, going on in the markets out here. So we'll continue to keep an eye on some of these. Um, but continue to see a great deal of these stocks moving higher. Uh, was looking at these gaps in Cullen Frost CFR, not the Council of Foreign Relations, as everybody else thinks uh, are the boogeymen, but uh, Cullen Frost bankers. Uh, this thing had a gap down on the 8th of December and another one uh, where it gapped down on the 11th of December of last year. 
it's kind of come into that. Uh, but I'm very interested to watch how it goes after this April 29th high. That's uh, 65.05, 1 million shares. Um, and, of course, uh, we got into it yesterday with 400,000 shares. So 40% today, we've got about the same amount, a little bit more. Uh, but certainly, um, as we're breaking these, some of these highs out here, we're starting to see, uh, like I said, it, it may, I wouldn't call it a trickle, maybe more than a trickle and maybe a handful. Uh, but these are the stocks that I was most interested in showing today. Uh, but uh, one of the reasons why I, the particular action I took in the daily newsletter this morning, uh, Comerica. Uh, another one out here. I was zoom in on this guy here if we can. Come on. There we go. And uh, another one uh, that was coming up to its high yesterday. Um, and, you know, what, he had 400,000 shares were going up against the April 29th high that had a million shares uh, today, 400,000 shares. So volume picking up very slightly, but you know, we had some nice high volume highs out here, just not really seeing a great deal of love drive into these stocks. And why I continue to think maybe this is good as it gets until we get back next week. Uh, but for me, I want some uh, big downtown action uh, if this market continues to see these stocks break uh, highs on lighter volume. Now, the CME, same kind of thing. When we look at uh, March 15th high, it had 2.1 million shares. Uh, this thing's getting into a gap. That gap actually occurred back on the 8th of December last year with 1.1 million shares. So you're kind of getting into you know, maybe a little bit more fuzzy. But uh, you got to think that with these kind of moves out here, breaking highs, you'd want to see some kind of sign of strength. Certainly nothing in that vein. Uh, but that March 15th high with 2.1 million shares really Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.